Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to pay less taxes like the wealthy do. I know it sounds like clickbait, but it's absolutely true. There's a reason why they have extra money. Uh, part of the idea is that you use the tax system to your benefit. Uh, 99, I was gonna say nine out of 10 times is way more than that out of uh, 10 times. Uh, many people don't know that they could potentially have ways of lowering their taxes and or paying less taxes in very normal situations that people kind of do every day and or if you are an actual investor. When you hear about these people who uh, not circumvent the way that they pay taxes but simply pay less taxes, it's because they have someone to usually help them to figure out the ways that they can actually uh, not have to pay as much at the end of the year. And these actually benefit everyone around there. We typically only hear the multi, multi, multi millionaires and or the billionaires uh, who benefit from these uh, tax breaks, but they also apply to other people as well. I am a very, very, very large advocate of uh, retirement, but also early retirement. Uh, in that, uh, this can be done by everyone, but we're not having that conversation of early retirement right now. We've done it before in many other videos. However, the idea of actually contributing to your uh, retirement fund actually has a lot of tax breaks. A lot of people don't know this. I um, have tried to tell other people before that you get actual uh, tax credits and or extra contributions to your retirement fund and or lower taxes, especially depending on where you live around the world, if you contribute to your retirement fund. The idea is that. I know that a lot of people are sometimes afraid of, um, and I dare say, government run ones because the idea for those of you who don't know how the system actually works, it's the young people who are making money right now in their jobs. They pay into the system and that's, that money gets funneled to the people who are older. So you can still find uh, retirement accounts that are simply only your money, i.e. what you put in will only ever be yours. It's a bit selfish, but I understand times are hard, times are rough. You want to make sure that when you retire, you have the money that you put away. Um, you can look on Vanguard and many other websites, not affiliated. You can even search online for where you locally live uh, for retirement accounts that will actually get you a lower tax rate on your taxes that you actually file over the course of next year. There are certain amounts that you can put into your uh, retirement account and or retirement savings and or 401k plan every single month and at the end of the year you show them how much you contributed to your retirement and they'll say okay you actually get some uh, tax percentages actually off of your uh, yearly tax rate. Uh, I know retirement isn't the most, um, uh, you know, the greatest conversation to have. I don't understand why more people aren't as into the idea of early retirement as I am or retirement in general. If you have not ever looked up any documentaries on retirement, a lot of people will not be able to retire. There are people currently right now who are going to be working into their 80s and 90s. I know that sounds absolutely insane, but that's the way that things currently are because no one's saving. Uh, people are I don't know everyone's economic situation. Uh, there are many people who cannot save for whatever the reason might be. I don't know what their lives are like. However, uh, the other 75% of people who do have extra money over the course of a month, they tend to spend it on other things and not actually think, uh, I don't wanna work until I'm 75, 85, 90, or don't have a choice anymore. I recently saw a documentary. One of the saddest things in my entire life, I actually had to turn off the TV. There was a, um, a woman, she was 79 years old, and the cameraman uh, proposed or asked the question and he said um, how does it feel knowing that you will never be able to retire and this woman broke into tears uh, and she screamed I wish I was outside I wish I was with my friends I'm gonna have to work until I die and I turned off the TV because I was like that's way that was way above my limit of what I could actually handle at that moment so uh, put money into your retirement account you will uh, save on taxes. Uh, the other thing, and a lot of people forget about this, if you are trying to get into stocks, um and you plan on investing in general, aim to invest long term. Uh, a lot of different countries, they have uh, tax rates that actually lower the, uh, they're called um, long term capital gain taxes. Uh, they lower the longer you hold an item. This is true for many different countries, depending on where you might live. If you are an investor or have been an investor in gold or silver, and you hold it for a certain amount of time and you sell that gold or silver, uh, the taxes that you would pay on it actually continue to lower. There's a different tax rate if you buy a stock and you trade it immediately as opposed to if you hold it for over a year. Hold it for over two years or three years. There are many different countries. Uh, they have different uh, tax rates completely based off of how long you actually hold something. So a lot of times your tax rate may be 
30, 20, 35, maybe 40% for the tax that you were holding if you sell it very quickly. However, if you hold it for over a year, two years or three years, and then you end up selling it, any profits that you make will no longer be taxed at a 30% rate, but maybe only a 15% rate, maybe only an 8% rate. And this is why uh, this is one of the easiest or most normal ways for people to actually accumulate wealth, especially if you have bought a stock that is a dividend stock and they are paying you every three to four months for you simply holding that stock. The longer you hold it and the longer you decide not to sell, the lower the tax rate will be when you finally begin to sell. And also the dividend rate also plays a part into it as well. If you are looking to get into stocks, look for stuff that you can hold for the long term. The same exact thing happens for cryptocurrencies as well. In many different countries, they have a, a short term and a long term uh, capital gains tax. You will pay much less in taxes the longer you actually hold it. And it's also beneficial to you, especially if it is giving you some form of passive income because then you are also in a completely different tax bracket. For those of you who uh, did not know, and this is going to hurt some people, uh, people who do not work are taxed differently than people who do, i.e., if you have a nine to five, you are taxed at a higher rate than someone who does not work, but makes their money passively from their investments. This is why, one, yeah, I know. This is why one of the main goals is for you to actually uh, try to shift into uh, passive income resources so that not only are you well, no, that's it, so that you're taxed less, you don't have to work, and that you're also making money from literally doing absolutely nothing. I know, it's very, very weird, and, and every country is like this. You would assume that it's different, no, 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 no. It's, it's the same in every single country. The people who actually uh, toil and work a nine to five, they are taxed higher than people who are on a boat on vacation somewhere and are making three, four, five thousand passively uh, from their stocks or from their crypto or from some other uh, investment. Yeah, I know, it's absolutely um, insane. Same exact thing goes for long-term real estate holds. You may see in the TV shows where people buy up real estate and then they flip it. They're like, yeah, we flipped this for $900 million. We have so much money. Uh, one of the other ideas, hear me out here, is buying the, um, the apartment, the flat, the home, the house, the bungalow, and holding on to it. Not only will you be able to then make money long-term from people renting it out, but also inflation plays a factor as well. You will be able to uh, rent out said apartment, flat, and or bungalow house uh, for more and more every single year and or every couple of years, depending on the laws within your country. Uh, the benefits of holding on to real estate extend a lot further than you actually just simply being able to get passive income from someone living inside of it. When you also decide to sell, you will also have a lower tax rate as well. Yeah, there are many countries that have uh, exceptional rules for this uh, in that, uh, I e for France, country, random country, uh, if you are holding real estate, have bought real estate, they have a, a I want to say a staggered plan. Every extra year that you hold it, uh, your tax rate of what you would pay on taxes for that place continues to decrease. And I think after a good 20 something years, your tax rate actually ends up going to 0%. So if you sell that place, you pay no taxes on any gains that you made on that place. You can look it up. It's absolutely weird. And I definitely looked into it before as well. The same exact thing holds true for Germany. Germany has a thing where I believe if you buy real estate and you live inside of it over the, for three years and prove that you've lived inside of it, you know, hey, you have mail and stuff going to you over the course of three years and you sell that apartment, that house, that bungalow, uh, can you guess what your tax rate is? It's zero after three years. Uh, the same thing for Hungary. You might remember years ago I had a video about having real estate in Budapest, which I sold, and I sold it after the five-year period. Do you know why I sold it after the five-year period? I paid 0% taxes on the profit that I made from having the property. So if you were looking to getting into the property game, or if you are lucky enough to do so, uh, consider where you're also buying. I know this sounds a bit uh, pinky in the air and or bougie, uh, consider buying overseas. I know it sounds terrifying. You can find management companies. Yes, I do use management companies. I saw people asking me that before. I do not manage all of my properties by myself. There's no, that's not going to be a thing, especially if they're in another country. You can find, you can even on Google, like a simple Google search, you can find uh, companies who will like manage things for you. You can see the other ratings, how many other people have actually used them, you know, how many stars out of five that they actually have, and you will get additional tax benefits from also having it overseas, especially for the taxes that you would have to then pay, uh, especially if you are from the States. Uh, and in, in the event of a sale, you would only actually have to pay a federal tax, which is roughly around 15% and not a state tax. 
Also additional benefits by literally buying overseas. So when you would sell in Germany or in France or in Hungary or any other place that's out there, in the country of sale, you would pay 0% tax. And if you are still a US citizen, you would then only pay 15% as opposed to a 30, 40, 50% tax rate, depending on how quickly you sold it. Weird, right? It's so insane. Like when you think about all the benefits that rich people have to be able to like sell stuff, it kind of is a, it's a little bit weird how many options that they have. I know this will sound a little bit weird as well. This is not a joke. Consider moving. Um, a lot of times different countries have different tax rates depending on where you are within the country. The United States has different tax rates for their territories as well. Puerto Rico, we went over before, has a 0% tax rate uh, when it comes to cryptocurrencies and many other things. And, and I think even for a certain um, long-term capital gains taxes, it's also a lot less as well. A lot of rich people tend to move to Puerto Rico because it is, you know, you can go there with your U.S. passport. It is a U.S. territory. Uh, look into that for where you live as well, depending on if you are once again lucky enough to actually move to another country or even move somewhere else uh, within your country. Uh, the the short-term benefits or the, the short-term idea of it may be absolutely terrifying, moving somewhere else, but then you realize, hey, I'm paying 30, 40, 50% less, how much extra money you could then be saving over the course of the next couple of years. There are a lot of Americans uh, or other people in general, but I'm going with the American uh, thing here, uh, who are actually moving to Dubai. The idea once again is the United States is the only country on the planet. If you are a US citizen, no matter where you live, you still get taxed and you have to pay taxes to the United States. You have to, you have to file your taxes as well every single year. Um, unless you can prove that in your country where you're currently living that you are paying uh, an, an egregious amount of taxes and therefore your US tax rate falls to zero, but you still have to file every single year. I know it sounds terrible. However, a lot of Americans actually tend to move to Dubai. Why do they move to Dubai? Because Dubai has a 0% tax rate when it comes to income. So let's say you made 100K per year. Uh, you would then be able to keep that 100K as you are living in Dubai, and therefore there are no taxes on your income. However, you would still have to technically pay taxes to the United States. But at that point, you would only be paying the federal taxes of 15% as opposed to 42%, 45%, 50% percent, depending on which state that you currently are. So like I said, I know it sounds insane, but this is why you hear all the time and have heard, like this billionaire is moving to California, this one moved to Texas, this one moved to so-and-so, this one moved to this island. They're doing it for a reason. It's to make sure that they pay less taxes because even in our case, that's a whole bunch of extra money that you then would be able to not only save, put towards your retirement or be able to invest. It's a very alluring thing to be able to think that you have so much extra money at the end of a year uh, simply because you packed your bags and moved somewhere else. Um, you are also able, if you live, and I, <laughs> I was going to say if you live inside of a home, if you if you work from home, uh, don't forget this as well. You're able to write off uh, on your taxes that you actually work from home. A lot of countries do this uh, based on space. So let's say you are working in your living room and your living room is X size. At the end of the year, you can actually write that off as if it is or it actually is your office. It is your home office. Uh, you are actually able to deduct taxes from that as well and save a huge chunk of money. There are tons of people who do this. Um, yeah, not really much more to say to that. This is a more of a, over the last three years, a larger amount of people have begun to work from home. And I want you to understand that if you are working from home, uh, you can most certainly write that off as well and save a huge chunk of money on your taxes. You can do it for renovations as well. If you have renovated anything inside of your home, if you work from home, if you bought a new computer, you can write off the computer. If you are a gamer on YouTube, you can write off the games and the video game systems that you bought to pay less taxes every single, I know it sounds insane, but there's so many different tax loopholes um, and you should definitely all be trying to take advantage of them as many times as possible. These are only some of the things I'm trying not to make the video too long. You realize I'm like talking as quick as I possibly can to give you as much information in a short amount of time. Uh, but yes, I would look it up online. You'll definitely be able to find a whole bunch of information on it on how to save on taxes. Uh, there are thousands of different ways and usually one of the easiest ways, especially if you are trying to build wealth in any sort of way, is to uh, invest in things for the long term. Look up your long term capital uh, gains taxes in your country, in your province, wherever you might live um, and see how they compare to other places around the world. I would recommend it uh, heavily so that you can save potentially probably 
thousands or tens of thousands every single year. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.